Greetings friends and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program! In the last episode I sent a rover to EVE. This is that rover and I said I was going to spend a little bit of time kind of going over the rover a little more in detail and I'm actually going to make this kind of like a, a mini rover tutorial. I'm going to show you a little bit about how to think about making a rover, what you got to consider, and then we're going to build this rover again. It's actually fairly simple. So at this point in my career mode game I'm not very far along. I don't have a lot of the end of the tech tree unlocked. So this is kind of a simple rover that I sent to EVE to fulfill a contract, but also to get me some science from all over the place. So the general process that you have to go through when making a rover, there's a few things you need to consider. You need a way to control the rover, the rover needs power, it needs to get around, and it needs to be able to do what you want it to do. Those are all very important. So to go over these, we're going to take this rover apart and then rebuild it. Alright, here are the parts kind of exploded. Got solar panels, I got various science things. I got a transmitter, Probodyne rover core, batteries, which aren't entirely necessary, wheels, you know, the whole the whole shebang. So I'll go over the, the checklist that I just told you, kind of in the way that makes sense to build it in Kerbal Space Program. Step one, Probodyne Rove Mate. It's a probe core that I have unlocked. You can you can start with literally anything. I've sent huge, huge rovers with like three passengers and room for more and full science lab and RCS that makes it hover and a whole bunch of crazy stuff like that. But we can just start simple, rove mate. Step two, what do I want it to do? So I go into the science, well I have this science stuff unlocked. Some of it I can send, some of it I can't. Like this for example is a very very useful science thing. The science junior, the problem is, it's really big. It's really really big and they're one time use only. So I, I kind of opted out of those for the rover itself. They're in the lander, I'll, I'll talk about the lander a little later. The, how I, how I kind of got around that. What I can use is this, the seismic accelerometer which is right here. These, the mystery goo, they're also one time use but they're very small. The barometer, got that right there. This surface scanning module, I didn't know what it was so I just stuck it on anyway, hope for the best. Atmospheric fluid spectrovariometer, very very difficult to pronounce. I don't know what it does but it's under the science tab and I unlocked it so I, I, I put it on there. And the thermometer, see that up here. Now a lot of these are reusable, you can reuse them as many times. You, you, you do the science, you transmit it, you can reuse it, except for the mystery goo. So then I basically just kind of arranged them around the rover, however I felt like. So I went with four mystery goo containers, just kind of stuck them on the ends, used this offset tool to move it in. You still want it to be visible, you still want to be able to see it from the outside because you have to right click on it to, to activate it. But you can, you can kind of tuck it in a little bit to make things look a bit cleaner. And then I stuck another one on the sides, using the same offset tool thingy. Now for the rest of the experiments, I didn't need that many of them, I could just put one of each. So I, I really didn't need multiples or anything, I could just kind of place them however I wanted. I may not be putting them in exactly the same place, I wasn't really paying that close of attention to be honest, but they, they'll work just fine. I thought this one looked particularly cool on the top, doesn't it look like it's got like vents or something, I don't know. It looked cool, but it was huge, it was too big. Actually, now that I think about it, that might not have been there. Oh well, it's all good. Need some power. I really don't remember where I put all these things now. I I may be doing this entirely wrong. This is the big problem when it's sticking out the bottom. You don't want that. Okay, I got all my science equipment on there. The next thing I need to do is transmit data back. There, I'll just do it that way. Put the things on the front and the back. Problem solved. Now I have my transmitter. Got my transmitter right here to transmit all the science that I gather. But what I'm going to need now is power. This has power, this probe core has some power in it already. I augmented that with some batteries. The batteries aren't really necessary, I just thought a little extra power probably couldn't hurt. And I slid those up into the body. And then we need more power. So we got these uh, nice little solar panels here. The way I put those on, see if you hit X you get the doubles. But I, I didn't want this, I wanted this kind of double. And that's called mirror symmetry and you change that by hitting R. So I just put a few of those on, like so. So now it has power on the top, and the top hopefully will be pointing up. If it's not pointing up, we have bigger problems than solar panels. So now I have a rover, I can control it through the probe core. It is powered through the solar panels and the batteries, and it does what I want it to, which is gather science and transmit science from this thing. Now we need to make it move. It needs to be a rover. And I did that with, a, with an eight-wheel design, kind of like this. Now when you're thinking about mobility, there's a few things you need to think about. For one, wheel placement. If you think about it, like, let's pretend this is the ground. There are a few angles you need to think about. There's an angle in the front, there's an angle in the back, and an angle in the middle. And this rover uh, doesn't really have issues with that, but I'll show you another design that might. If we had a rover that looked like this, 
it's kind of neat looking, but we'd run into to a slight issue. If I had to hit, go up a hill or there's a little bump, uh, the bump might hit the front of the body of the rover here and we wouldn't be able to go up it. It would be stuck. Same for the back. It would hit something, like if we, if we went up or we went down a hill and we got to the bottom, started flattening out, it might hit here and kind of lift these back wheels up off the ground. That would be a problem. Likewise, if we went over a bump, this angle here isn't very steep, so we could bottom out. See where we run into the approach angle problem here? This is kind of a steep hill. If we go to hit it, the front of the rover hits the concrete before the wheels hit. So we kind of bounce off and we have to kind of jerk. Oh, and then it almost tipped over backwards. See, what, what you really don't want to happen is for your rover to tip over backwards. You see, that's a problem. Because now we can't get back up and our solar panels aren't pointing upwards. I fixed a lot of these problems by doing this. See, it has more ground clearance, but also, you see the angle of attack on the front? I can hit something straight on in a wall and it won't hit the body of the rover. Same for the back. And I have this huge amount of ground clearance right in the middle. So to get stuck to bottom out here, we would need something very, very pointy and very, very short to, to kind of bottom us out. All right, here we are back on the launch pad. See our last rover all tipped over over there. And see, I, I can go down this hill a bit easier. I can bump into things, it doesn't tip over. It's a higher center of gravity, so it's higher up, but it, it gives us more ground clearance, and putting the wheels farther forward and farther back, or this extra set of wheels, kind of helps with the stability problem. So, we'll try climbing up this same hill. See, watch, the wheels hit first, so it just goes straight up. And look, it doesn't, it doesn't have enough grip, it seems, to climb up it, but at no point is it in danger of flipping over backwards. Another cool thing to think about, with all these extra wheels, we have redundancy! Smash! So if we fall off something and break a couple of wheels, it's not really a big deal. There are still front wheels, there are still back wheels, and, and we can still steer, we can still move. The cool thing about these little wheels is when they break, they kind of retract up, out of the way. As long as they don't conflict with the other wheels. Huh, those are pretty close. That, that could have been an engineering problem. But look, we can still drive around. We can even go backwards. Since the wheels are symmetrical, this can go equally well forward or back. And even with the broken wheels, climb! It can climb back up! With the extra redundancy, you can go on with even less wheels. See, look, we jumped off again, broke another wheel, still moving! We are still in business! So there, that's three broken wheels. Three! And it still works just as well, or not just as well, but you know, you get the idea. You want that redundancy because you can't fix a rover once it's broken. Here's the actual rover that I used, not the one that I cobbled together just now incorrectly. I hooked it up to like a drop test thing. I kept raising it higher and higher and higher. This is a pretty high drop and the decoupler up here also kind of ejects it downward with some force. And this is, uh, this is stout enough to handle the drop. Crunch! You can see? No wheels broken. It's nice and durable. Geronimo! And it keeps going. No problem. So there, some basic things to remember when rover building. You need control, you need to do whatever you want it to do, science or whatever. Power, rechargeable power, you need mobility. And you want the mobility to allow you to cover all kinds of terrain. As much as you, as much as you might think you're going to cover anyway. While also giving you a bit of redundancy, so if something breaks, you, you can continue your mission. You're not going to fail. Well, it would be really nice if this thing was able to flip itself back over, but I, I didn't think of that. And of course the last step is landing it. So this is kind of a weird contraption that I had to land it. I was landing in EVE, which basically means lots and lots and lots of atmosphere so I can use air brakes and slow down with parachutes and all that. I don't need any rockets. I have this giant heat shield in the front for hitting the atmosphere. Air brakes the slowest down, but also to kind of keep the uh, heat shield pointed forward. They acted a bit like tail feathers or something. And then at one point, we would enter the atmosphere, this would do its shielding of the heat thing. Uh, once we slowed down enough where we didn't really need this anymore, this would decouple and went away and crashed down at the surface. Then we kind of had the air brakes, they were still slowing our descent. When we got a bit closer, these parachutes went off and they really slowed our descent. And then right before landing, I had landing legs. Oh, all four. All four of the landing legs. There we go. Landing legs, so they touch down, and the rover touched down nice and gently, nice and slowly. Remember I said these were too big and cumbersome? Well, I stuck them on the lander, so I landed it like this. I did some of these tests, like in the atmosphere when we were entering, and then when we hit the ground. Then I transmitted these science experiments. I had these nice, I had these solar panels here that I could deploy to kind of keep energy going. And then, once this whole lander thing was used up, I decoupled that, 
that looked weird, but it basically just dropped the rover like the two inches, which is more than enough for the rover to handle. And the rover drove off, and then we had our rover. And here's our rover, putzing along. See, I can drive all over the planet. The one downside, however, is this is a very large planet, and this is all the faster the rover can drive, so it takes a long time. But hey, the, the NASA missions to Mars have been there for years, years and years. It's gonna take a while to get places. But see, this can do all of the science. I can only do the mystery goo four times, but four times is plenty, I think. I don't know if I'll be able to drive this to any other biomes anyway, I don't have a whole lot of time. But it is a functioning rover and has all of its wheels. All of its wheels survived the landing, and there really aren't any cliffs to fall off of here. So I think I think this is quite, quite a successful rover. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'll try to answer any rover questions or any other questions. And if you like this video, leave a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We'll make a lot more Kerbal Space Program videos. Well, we will either way, and uh, we make other videos too that I hope you enjoy. So if you want to see any other Kerbal Space Program tutorials, please let me know. I'll, I'll do what I can, and uh, I will see you next time. Bye-bye! Successful landing!